Well, ladies and gentlemen, it does look like the Democrats might be regretting picking the blubbering buffoon himself, Tim Waltz, to be the VP. If you guys remember, the whole thing was done at the last second. The betting had Tim Waltz at like 1%, 2%. And you can see there's new leaks indicating that Harris Camp is regretting not picking Josh Shapiro, who certainly appears way more presidential than Tim Waltz. Did the far left really bully the Democratic establishment into picking Waltz over Shapiro because of the Israel-Palestine issue where Josh Shapiro came out heavily against the Palestine protesters who are very far left. A lot of them aren't even voting for Kamala Harris, but it does seem like Josh Shapiro was the obvious pick. Not only does he seem at least way more presidential than Waltz, but he also is in a more important state. Waltz very likely will not even help Harris one iota in Minnesota. She probably will win Minnesota, but it's not going to be because of Walt. Going to be because of Waltz. You could say the same thing about J.D. Vance. But still, when it comes to Waltz, it's a lot weirder considering Trump was down to like Rubio, Vance, Doug Burgum was in it. It really wasn't all that surprising when it ended up being Vance. But with this situation, it was kind of out of left field. And so the question is, did they really get bullied? And and there are some rumors that maybe there was some strategy behind not picking Shapiro because of the Muslim population in Michigan, possibly being a very important swing state, but still you have to think like, is Waltz really either trying to do as this like American dad, this, this small town guy. I mean, that's his, that's his theme song. I was born in a small town. That's, that's what it was. Um, you, you can see they potentially regret picking him. And then you do have MSNBC coming out and saying Trump tries to use Waltz family against him and fails hilariously. Now say that without crying. <laughs> Uh, But yeah, apparently it looks like MSNBC is saying that Trump failed. You can see Waltz, uh, some of his family members, they've got shirts, Nebraska, Waltzes for Trump. So these are family members, apparently second cousins, and also Jeff Waltz, the brother of Tim, who apparently hasn't spoken to him. He said in like eight, nine years, that's an interesting dynamic in and of itself. But, But the family comes out against him, and Trump said in his town hall, kind of sarcastically, I did think, I I want to talk about the town hall really quickly. You know, that was originally supposed to be Kamala Harris against Trump last night in a debate. There was going to be a September 4th debate. Trump said that he agreed to three debates because remember, Kamala Harris said Trump was scared. That's what their campaign was saying. And then of course, Trump says, you think I'm scared? I'll do you one better. You wanted one debate. I'll agree to three debates. And he agreed to, and the three debates, it was not like it was crazy. Like, oh, he agreed to three Fox News debates. No, he agreed to The Fox News debate on September 4th, which was supposed to be last night, the, what is it, the ABC debate on the 10th, and then another debate a few weeks later on NBC. So really, that's two liberal networks, one conservative. That's very fair for Kamala Harris, but because they're all pampered bitches, I don't want to go on Fox News. (laughs) Fox News is mean. They said bad words about me. So she can't do Fox News, of course, and... I thought they should have just done a better job of showing the how much of a coward she is. Not like the first entire segment of that town hall should have been, guys, let's just put this into perspective. She won zero votes. This was supposed to be a debate. Two debates with a liberal network, one with a conservative. It's, it's, it's balanced more so in favor of them. And she won't even do one conservative network. They pry her out with like a freaking crowbar to get her to even do an interview. And she's got to have Waltz by her side. And even that interview, I mean, it's like, yeah, when you put this in a kind of, people just don't know. They don't understand. She's done one interview. It was a dual interview with Waltz. Him and Vance combined have done 34 interviews and basically none of them have been dual. They've all been solo where either Vance is talking one-on-one or it's Trump. Trump has done two press conferences of over an hour long the past month and a half. This is his second town hall in the span of two weeks. Yes, it's with Fox News. This is a softball town hall. We get it, but still... The perspective of this all, not only was her one interview ridiculous because Waltz is there, but you also have the fact that they said, no, the transcript's not going to come out and we're editing it down and it's not live. And it was only 18 minutes with her talking for 16 minutes. And then Waltz really just giving excuses for the stolen Valor stuff. He didn't take any accountability for it at all. So when you understand the context of this, it's just so absurd 
And, and so that's really what they should have done last night for the first segment is just show just how much of a coward she is. She cannot do a debate. It has to be with a liberal network. I mean, this is serious. Like, it's not me making this up. She didn't do the Fox News debate because she was afraid of Fox News and a conservative network. That's what it is. They're, they're, they, I mean, I mean, can, can anyone deny that? Does any liberal want to argue that? Um, she only wants to do liberal networks. This is for the president of the United States. There was no primary. She debated nobody this year. She hasn't done a single one. She did one debate in 2020. And we know she did a debate in 2019. Tulsi Gabbard literally, you know, killed her metaphorically on the debate stage. Um, and, and now I saw articles from CNN saying that she's a good debater. Her career was, you know, her campaign, which by the way, had a lot of money backing it. Kamala Harris's 2019, 2020 primary campaign it was nuked because of a debate and how bad she was. But no, 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 she's a good debater. You're right, you're right, she's a good debater. Um, so it just goes to show you how ridiculous it all is. And it, even Walt's, I mean, this is a mistake, they, them picking Walt. I don't think it'll matter because it's a VP, but still with Shapiro, at least you've got someone who's more presidential. Yes, he had his problems. Republicans were already attacking him on like, like the murder mystery thing there. Although I've heard that was gonna be potentially a nothing burger. I don't know. It doesn't matter anymore because no one really cares about it considering he was not the pick of the VP. It was really Walt. And you look at all these approval rating and ratings and Walt is plus 10 and Vance is minus 10. And of course, none of that really matters because if that really did matter and it was that wide range, you would see a bigger result. We've got Trump leading right now. So obviously the approval rating of the VPs don't matter. And that's before the debate, which isn't happening until October 1st, by the way, the Vance versus uh. Walt's debate. And that's another situation where Vance said, I want to have multiple debates. And Walt said, no, I'm not doing it. You, you, you cannot get these people to do anything, even doing a single debate. It's like pulling teeth, but at least he did agree to one debate. And to be fair, normally the VPs, I believe only do one debate. At least that's what's happened recently in 2020 and 2016. But either way, uh, it does seem like they are potentially, you know, a little, uh, not happy with their choice and probably should have picked. It seemed like they were going to pick Shapiro. I know there were a few others. Mark Kelly possibly would have been another. I mean, I think if you're going to go with someone like Waltz, maybe the only thing I can think of is that Midwestern like dad thing. Maybe again, it's the VP. You really can't read a ton into it. It's, it is what it is. Uh, Trump continues to go up in terms of the, the, the poly market. At least last time I saw he was at 53%. I think there's a funny clip. I'm going to play this. And unfortunately this is a liberal dude, but He's basically tells on them when this. Let me tell you why I don't think a blanket tax and unrealized gain is a good thing. I mean, let's say you're an entrepreneur. This is a liberal you create a company idea. and it gets to 100 million or 200 million on paper. Now, if you're taxing that, you're probably going to force that person to sell it. They're probably going to sell it to private equity. Do you really want the entrepreneurs yes, to be forced do. to sell their companies yes. to larger institutions yes. and to decline in value? I just I don't think that that's what you want for a that startup. That would be the unintended consequence. They want they want individuals to have less money. That's the point. And they want the larger institutions that they can control easier to have all the money. So, so it's, that's exactly the point you're making. Yes, they do. They want the people to sell all their stuff. They don't want an Elon Musk situation where he takes over everything and destroys their uh, crazy control they had over free speech on the internet because they do not believe in free speech on the internet. It's sad that nobody talks about that, but that was their, that, that that's what they said. I mean, you ask any liberal when conservatives or doctors would get banned, uh, you know, or censored in 2020 off of, Twitter, you know, I guess, or Facebook, because it was happening on both of them. Those are the two biggest ones for, for talking. It even happened on Instagram, but those two were the main ones. They would say, yes, it's a private company, basically saying that they endorse censorship. And, and they would say, legit say that there is no free speech protection on the internet with these private companies, which is of course true, but it's a very heinous thing to say when you're an American and we know how powerful and impactful these social media platforms are. And before Elon Musk took them over, there was a total censorship against conservatives. And now that Musk has opened everything up, they throw their little hissy fits like five-year-olds. And this is the result that we get. They call Musk, oh, he's a Nazi. He, he just It's the boy who cried wolf. Nobody believes any of it. Nobody cares. It's like calling Trump Hitler. Oh my God. Oh, what will we ever do? They think he's so bad. Uh, you know, Trump is seriously sacrificing. He nearly sacrificed his life. A crazy leftist nearly killed him. And that is the tolerant left. And, and they talk about political violence. Yeah, that there's some political violence right there. There was actually a Trump supporter that was killed. Obviously, we know that. And then they got, I mean, they lashed out so bad. There were top, top Democrats, top liberals 
that, that were happy that that firefighter died. That's how crazy and deranged these people are. But it really has to do with Trump just triggering them and how badass he looked in that moment. They couldn't deal with it. They couldn't manage their emotions. So they lashed out. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.